today's topic is theory of inference so why we use this inference theory inference theory is concerned with the inferring of a conclusion from a certain hypothesis or a basic assumption called as a premises by applying a certain principle of reasoning called as a rule of inference so when you give it like this sentence nobody can't understand what do you mean by that means some condition will be given in the question that is called as a hypothesis or assumption that is only hypothesis or a some basic assumption will be given that name is called premises that name is called premises the given question is called premises for a premises we will have a, some conclusion it will be given in a question we have to do that conclusion using some rules or Uh, using some laws or using some equivalence condition using that we are going to conclude the given question so that only is called as a theory of inference okay next is state the rules for inference there are two rules p rule and t rule p rule is nothing but the given question or uh, can be it can be introduced anywhere anywhere in the steps in the anywhere in the derivation we can introduce it it's called as a p rule t rule the formula can be introduced in the derivation if x is a okay so whatever the formula is a topologically implies by a more or one or more proceeding formulas in the derivation more than the one or more formulas are involved means then we can introduce the t rule okay so only this two rule ha have been we are been using additionally cp rule cp rule is nothing but conditional proof cp rule is nothing but conditional proof only short form it is written as cp rule it is uh, the cp rule we have a theorem for that if the theorem name is called deduction theorem so in a cp rule it will be always the cp rule will be where we will be using means in the conclusion part we will be using the cp rule in the conclusion part we will apply this cp rule if for example if s is derived from r and the set of premises then we can write is r is uh, Conditional to yes can be derived from a set of premises alone. So if we have like this R condition to yes means R we can take as additional premises in anywhere in the question we can write only yes. Okay, so this is called as a ZP rule. Next the theory of inference or what are the methods to solve means the method is nothing but direct method of proof. direct method of proof indirect method of proof direct method of proof what we are going to do means the premises the set of premises will be given accepting the rule and we will derive it so you will get your answer that is called as a direct method of proof indirect method of proof means indirectly we prove how we can prove means any question given we can prove it any any way there are so many ways to prove it so how we can prove it means the question given what i am going to do indirect uh, method means i am going to take opposite okay so if if for example if the question is given c only is our conclusion or p is a conclusion means opposite is nothing but negation okay so false statement we are going to take so assume a false statement okay negation we are taking so whatever we take that false statement the symbol we use is negation c we have to take as additional premises and we are going to get a false statement so you will get a contradiction or inconsistent you will be getting okay contradiction opposite you will be getting or inconsistent you will be getting so whatever the true statement you will not get okay so there are two methods method of contradiction and method of contra positive contra positive is the same assumption only no change in that but you will be getting the answer to be opposite oh, okay so that is called as a contra positive everything when we do it in a problem you can understand it so there are rules of inference how many rules means totally here i have given all the rules nine rules okay the rules of inference are we will say imp implication i will write that also rules i am implications rules 
sometime it will be written in this also so both are same only so nine rules from that four five six and seven modus ponens modus tonus and hypothetical syllogism and this section syllogism so this four repeatedly we will be using in the problem remaining also we will be using but some cases of the problem only so all the four rules first i will tell simplification first rule is simplification so we we'll change the color simplification how we can write the simplification means what is the formula to write simplification means when p is conjunction to q condition to p when p conjunction to q condition to q sometimes okay it will be written p small p only small p this conjunction to q implies we will write it is called as this only implication only implies this a meaning we can write both both are same only so p so this way also i can write same way split and write so simplification we can split the terms when you have a product of two terms i can write the single term it may be a p or it may be a q okay so i can write it wherever we need according to that you can write it it's called as a simplification addition is nothing but single term single term i can combine and write with a distraction symbol okay next third third rule is conjunction conjunction is nothing but when we have separate bracket we can combine the bracket and write same way modus ponens p is a conjunction to p condition to q i can write it as q so this for example how it will be in the problem means one step before p will be there the next step will be p condition on q will be there then this both get cancel we can write it as q okay that is called modus ponens okay so sometimes with a conjunction symbol sometimes with a distraction symbol both you can use it okay so it's not wrong so modus ponens negation p p condition on q then we can write it as negation p it's modus ponens same way hypothetical syllogism p condition on q q condition on r then we can say that p is condition to r this section syllogism and p is destruction to q conjunction on negation p it is q from the name itself you can understand is a destruction whenever only in this destruction symbol it has been used means you have to use only this term resolution when p is destruction to q conjunction on negation p destruction to r some other variable then i can write q is destruction to r this both i can write it's called resolution dilemma when p is destruction to q conjunction on p is condition to r q is condition to r so we can say it is only r so it's called a dilemma
so we have completed all the rules okay nine rules using this only we have to see the problems in the next video thank you